Hello. The Clinical Practice Committee met today, the virtually, um, so by Zoom. So again, once again, we can be in the countryside. And it's actually turned out really quite nice this afternoon. And so today I haven't got any trousers on um, at all. So what do we talk about? Well, one of the things we've been working on for a while is the Beaver guidelines for euthanasia of horses um, associated with the all risks of mortality insurance claims. Um, we have, or Ian Beamish in particular, has, has, has done a lot of work rewriting these guidelines. Um, we're hoping to recognise the significance of chronic disease much more rather than just acute diseases in these cases. We know these have got to be circulated a little bit further, these guidelines, but we're reasonably happy with them now. And our next step is moving ahead and looking at the appendices, the actual list of conditions that we think euthanasia is appropriate for or, or advice on, on any of these conditions. We've also looked at um, guidance for castration in, in terms of consent forms and guidance for, for veterinary surgeons in terms of getting consent. Um, we have written um, guidance for veterinary surgeons, which has been sent to the VDS, and they are reasonably happy. I wouldn't say they were actually happy, but they're reasonably content with our, our, our guidance. And we're now um, trying to produce a simpler version for, um, for, for clients. We have representation on the sustainability group um, that um, we, it, we don't maybe attend that as often as we could. It's not held at the most convenient time. We have some, or they, they, the sustainability group has been looking at parasiticides a little bit as, as most people have. That's one of the, the, the current um, uh, real sort of buzz topics is the, the environmental impact of parasiticides in, across the entire veterinary sector, sector not, just, um, not just horses. Dentistry, we've decided to look at the web page on the, the, the Beaver website and, and see if we can update that. Uh, in particular, looking at the, the section on current legislation of, of who and who is not allowed to do what to, to teeth. And Gemma Dransfield is going to be dealing with that. And then last of all, chilled semen. Now... Uh, you may or may not know, but um, uh, Britain left the European Union uh, a few years ago, and, and as a result, um, quite a few things have changed, including um, the, the borders and importing um, things. Now, um, that scheme, um, uh, or the, the new border legislation, came in, I think, on the 1st of March this year, but earlier this year. DEFRA were persuaded really at, at very much the last minute to um, come up with a scheme for chilled semen. And there is um, a, currently a pilot scheme which involves about 20% of imports being checked. They're subject to ID checks. And, and I think, think again, it, it, it didn't necessarily occur to some of the people working on this that um, IDing semen wasn't just a question of opening the box and having a look inside and, and confirming what it was. Um, so there's quite a laborious system which involves multiple photographs and emails of um, both the ID documents and the import certificates and, and the seals on, 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 on the containers. Um, those practices dealing with it are, are, are you know, they, they, they do find it quite hard work. Um, they have commented that the East Midlands Airport is extremely good. East Midlands Airport is, is, is working on this very well, whilst Heathrow apparently uh, couldn't be bothered at all. I personally had always assumed that um, the, the matters of import and export were, were, were matters for His, His Majesty's government and, and the, the airports just did what they were told. But, but apparently that's uh, not the case. There is um, considerable variation uh, across these. But um, those that are involved in this pilot are, are finding it pretty laborious. Those that aren't, it, it, nothing has changed. They're allowed to, to continue splashing it around just as, as, as normal, if, you, if you'll pardon the uh, perhaps rather unfortunate uh, metaphor there. Um, we didn't feel there was much that we could do um, to, to help here other than make sympathetic noises, um, which we duly did, and, and, and hope to continue monitoring it. That was our achievements um, of June this year. Thank you.